Here we are. Um, so it has been a little minute. I'm on because of me, I will uh, admit I'm not uh, shying away from that. We're on episode sixty-seven, um, ahead of a month that is going to be very busy. The documentary is finally finished. I'm getting the final cut on friday or saturday it might be saturday because i'm actually i'm actually away at the professional wrestling on a friday night no. uh local no i'm not wrestling don't worry like there's no some mad career change about happened but, <laughs> um uh, mayhem brooks who was on the podcast uh back earlier in the year is uh wrestling in elgin town hall so i thought it'd be cool to go see it maybe get a ticket signed whatnot uh perks for the the wall of fame like we've just been mentioning we're yeah. Got the Aiden Stephen gloves here, which because it's going to be two slides next to each other and I've going to crop, it's probably not going to be there in shot. But then the gloves are next to me. So it's uh it's been a little minute. We've got plenty to talk about. Um I suppose we've got an hour, so what I'll do is uh I'll give yourself and people at home a bit of a uh, an insight onto how things uh went in the summer and how th- uh, things took a bit of a, a back seat for a minute. Uh, so what was the last one that we did? Actually, the last one that we did actually never made it to air because I fucked up and like, um, so what had happened was is, uh, because I've been switching the cameras back and forth for different settings because one's like for the documentary and one's for the podcast yeah. and they do have different settings. Uh, I, because we were going and doing a lot of interviews at that time around the summer, uh, I was forgetting to switch them back. So in the Conan episode, and I mean, I did mention to this, uh, mention this to you over Messenger. It's it's a it's a very small thing, but obviously, it's like someone that like plays take, on your mind. Yeah, the more you takes, think about takes it. pride in, in what they do, and they likes to be a perfectionist with it. I was editing it that night, actually. I uh, which was one of the best podcasts we've done, right? Like, um, I knew Conan a little bit, but I didn't obviously know him uh, to that extent and a, a deeper level. And that. I thought it was a really good chat. But I noticed when I was editing it, um, so like when I do the multicam, obviously there was one on us and yeah, yeah. there was one on him, and I was like, "That seems a bit blurry." So I said to I said to my mum to like come over, and I was like, "Does that look blurry to you?" And she had to like really squint, mm-hmm. and she was like, "Yeah, it does a little." And then I I checked like the specs of the the shot and stuff, and I was like, "Oh no, it's like it's in it's in four K, which means it took like way longer to like upload yeah, yeah. than what it should have, and it was still in manual focused, which I just." Usually for the podcast, because it's quicker, I just bang the autofocus on yeah. and, and there we go. But it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like made that much of a difference. And then we did more interviews and then we did one on, on mental health. And I went to go uh, uh, edit that. And I, I don't know why this had happened, but one of the cameras, uh, footage corrupted. I don't know why. I still haven't. It kind of uh, gives me paranoia a little bit in a way because it's not happened again since. And I don't know what happened <laughs> to like explain but the other one I had um, shot in the wrong resolution. So like when it came up in the editing window, it was very, very small. So let's yeah. just say overall, I funked that one. But I mean, I've, uh, it's, been a, it's been a bit of a weird year for me. Um, obviously, I've kind of had a lot going on uh, aside this as well. And don't get me wrong, like I really do enjoy like doing this. But there's just been some stuff going on with me mentally, stuff like that. And I think it kind of came to a head there and... Uh, it's fair to say that my mind was a bit all over the place for like a month, month and a half. And well, the amount of like episodes you've been doing in the like in between that though. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like you're allowed to have a little Yeah, bit, exactly. You know I think I mean? it was just a bit of burnout, right? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like and yeah. it's all about kind of being self aware, kind of maybe take yourself out of it a little bit and just reset. But we're back now, busy with month. Um good to have you here again. Obviously it's been good a to be here, it's been a been a while we have Aye. A lot to talk about. Um, so I wanted to talk about first because uh, I've seen you know how like things come up on Facebook if people reply to comments and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So I've seen that you've uh, been watching the recent "I'm a Celebrity," right? Which I think <laughs> a lot of us have, right? Just yeah. For the the uh, the infamous man of Here we go. Matt yeah, Hancock, yeah. right? And yeah. it feels a bit weird in the sense because he's went into this to kind of try and. PR stunt it because like, yeah. he's a hated person right because of what happened through COVID and he's tried to um, do all this stuff to like make himself look like a more likable character uh, I, I did catch a few episodes I haven't uh, been able to watch the full thing um, 
I just wanted to get your thoughts on that first, and then we can like go back and forth on yeah. it and discuss and whatnot. Yeah, well, I've been watching Amish Celebrity for like a long time. And then I see when he was going in, I was like, well, okay, this, he's obviously just going to be going into this to sort of like try and make the public think that he's a good person. It's almost like the government is like, right, okay, you, you've got a job to do, go in here and try and turn it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then so like when he comes out, everybody's like, oh, he's such a nice guy. He's, such, he's, a, he's only a human. Yeah, This, yeah. that, the next thing. And it's thing. been working. I've seen people like defending him on Facebook. It, like, yeah. it's, it's 100% worked. Because like I was in the comments on day one, right? I wasn't writing comments. I was just reading them. And then it was saying like, how dare he do this? You know, all the people that died, all the people that he let down, you know, he, they set the rules and he breaks them and this, that, and the next thing, right? I'm on it on like maybe the last couple of days of I'm a celebrity. I went onto the, the comments and I saw like, oh, Matt to win, Matt to win, Matt to win. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. This is like one of the biggest turns I've ever seen, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah, he's 100%. He's just acting. He's playing. He's doing a part and he's mm. it's worked. Yeah, and it's mental how it's so easy to spin the public's perception of you. The UK public, like, I, I didn't think we were that weak. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, are you, are, are, like, are, have you not forgotten what he did? Yeah, and it's not just like the people that died. Like, think about the amount of stuff that he sold to people that he knew. Yeah. Like, yeah. when all this was going on, he was making like money through this. And I seen him on, um, I don't know if you've ever watched this podcast. It's one of the uh, guys from Dragon's Den, uh, Stephen Bartlett. I have seen his podcast, but I didn't see the episode. Yeah, so he had Matt Hancock on uh, <clears throat> in February this year. And I was interested, right? Because I was like, is Stephen going to ask him like these hard questions about like what he was about and stuff? And admittedly, I do, I do think he kind of pushed him on a lot of things, but in true Matt Hancock style, um, the one thing I'll say about Matt Hancock is it doesn't matter what he's talking about. I get suspicious of him straight away. 100%. Like, he could be telling me he's making sandwiches and I'd be like, what's this dude's motive behind this? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. very uptight. He's putting something on that sandwich. It shouldn't be yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, to, like, see, like when I seen him in the jungle, right? And he, like, you could see people, like when he first went in, everybody in the, in the camp was like, what the fuck is he doing here? And then I seen like, Charlene, uh, I can't remember her last name, but Charlene Blue's woman. She like, she's a journalist, right? So, and she's, um, she was asking him questions, like like a journalist would ask him, right? But she's obviously got to be careful, obviously because she couldn't break certain rules of being a journalist, or she could have lose her job because she's also a news presenter. So she was asking questions. Then other people were asking him questions, and he was getting it like constantly, right? But and then. The like these politicians are like professional liars, and they're easy. They can easily spin a question round and and literally like turn it into something else. Yeah, and he did that a lot. And uh, I was thinking, yeah, like I can and I could actually see them warming up to him. Yeah, I could see everybody like, oh, we don't like Matt Hancock, but we like the Matt in here because he pulls his weight. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. That's why he was in there. Yeah, yeah. And, like, it's obviously changed the perception of him as a person to some people, right? Yeah. Like, it's it's weird because he would go, like, on that podcast that I was watching, they did, uh, Stephen did ask him about the, the contract. No, I think actually he brought it up, mm. which is very smart, right? Because then it mm -hmm. seems like, oh, I'm not scared to talk about this and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And he was like, well, that was a load of nonsense. But he doesn't provide evidence. There's one thing about my uncle, he's smart as fuck. No, he is. He's, he's very, very, very intelligent. And, you know, he was defending Boris and all the people. And it's very convincing and if you, yeah, exactly right yeah. like it's very convincing the way that he puts it across and to a lot of people that um take people just at face value and maybe time flies by and they forget what happened in the the, the times of of what was going on in that it's i can understand why people would like change their opinion in that but just knowing the type of politics he's from the way that they've been brought up in the school system right. to be these suits and yeah. Control kind of like, people's thoughts on them and stuff. Most yeah. people that are politicians in that in that life, they're you know, they come from very like wealthy backgrounds yeah. and mm -hmm. um they're sort of almost groomed to do this thing, you know, from an early age. Yeah. As soon as they get into like, you know, um boarding school and and then you know, then they go to university or whatever and then, you know, it's 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 all sort of put on them and 
they're that kind of person anyway. They talk like really posh. And yeah, they, they all go to like uh, is it Eaton. That's the one that like yeah, Boris yeah. And I think that's where um, King Charles went. Uh, yeah. went and um, no, yeah, yeah, King Charles. King Charles. Did he go to Eaton? Uh, was it not Gor- well? No, Gordonston's the the school. Yeah, maybe Eaton was the university. I think, I think yeah. a lot of like. Uh, higher up people have went to that school, right? Whether in politics. No, I or think up. I think he actually ended up going to Gornston, but he wanted to go to Eton or something. Mm-hmm. I've I've been watching the Crown. I don't. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot good. of controversy around that at the moment, right? Because they're talking about the new series and whether it's um, disrespectful or whatever. Obviously, like with the the Queen passing recently and yeah, um, yeah. stuff about is it like John Major and that is meant. Yeah, you, you know, like it is on one side. Like I don't think it claims to be like a like a. 100% biography of what's been going on. Obviously going to be dramatised. Like dramatised for television, exactly, of yeah. course. Lossie was in it, though. Was it? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Lossie was in episode one, man. Like, they, they, they were walking on the beach side the lighthouse. No way. Yeah. And they actually, did they film it or was yeah. it? A... Yeah, it was actually Lossie. That's mental. But they, but they said it was the west coast of Scotland. Oh. So because got, that's where yeah. they went at the time. Mm-hmm. But they obviously picked Lossie because, well, how could you not? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's like, beautiful most beautiful place in the world but it is to me anyway yeah but uh like yeah apart from when it's seagull season <laughs> aye but but you know the, i was actually quite surprised because like so i heard someone say it and then i was like i was gonna watch season five uh, but i was watching something else i needed to finish it i went on to season five and i was like holy shit it actually is lost it. it's it's mental like i remember um <clears throat> You ever remember that episode of, like you remember this episode of still game like your biggest still game lover is as I am, and any normal person in Scotland would be. But you remember the the Big Innes episode Aye. where they totally caricature Elgin, right? Like they, they they take the Doric to the next extreme. <laughs> it's like that's Chuck Jarvis from Craig Long. <laughs> um, but like even I don't think they go to Elgin at that. But even just hearing like a remote the area mentioned because they think that's like that's fucking north. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was world. funny. It was like a little croft in the middle of nowhere. Like, yeah, it was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's not what Elgin looks like. And it's crazy, like, different parts of Scotland will struggle to, like, understand each other. Like, mm. if someone from Glasgow came up here, I would imagine it'd be pretty hard to, like, hear words like sheen and yeah. stuff like that. And yeah, sometimes, yeah. sometimes even I struggle with it. I've been bored here for the, the start of my life and whatever, but <laughs> I remember getting off the train at Glasgow, like, a number of years ago, uh, just next to George Square. So I think it's the Queen Street one. Yeah. And um, so there's a taxi rank, right? And I, I obviously, I, I don't really know my way around Glasgow and whatever. So I was like, I'll get a taxi to the hotel, be the smartest way to do it, and get my bearings from there. Um. So I, I, you know, I'm not usually used to big cities. I don't really know how taxi ranks work there. Like yeah. in Elgin, you could just go up to one. It doesn't matter where they're positioned. You can just go up to one. You got you doing anything just now? And they're like, no, hop in, and you'd be away, right? So I just went for the middle one, and uh, I was just like, hey, are you on any runs at the moment? And um, the the guy that was like, she had taxi fronties, and like my mind just went blank. So uh, looking back and it was see that taxi in front of you is not to be an elitist. Um, <laughs> but like hearing that, like I, I didn't know what he was saying, but it was just because the accent was like so right. thick and it was like I wasn't used to it. And it just got to the point where like I couldn't understand. So I was like, never mind, close the door. <laughs> do you know, like, do you know, F- Scott Forrester is one of my mm-hmm. good pals, right? We, I, like, we spent a lot of time in the bar. So, and, we, and I met a lot of people from the RAF camp. Like, I actually became friends with quite a few mm-hmm. people from there. And I remember we were playing pool and Scotty was talking to me about something. And uh, the guy just looked at me and he went, what the fuck is he saying? <laughs> and I went, oh, right. Nobody can understand him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even people from here can't understand what he's saying. <laughs> so like God knows like we're anywhere else. Yeah, because yeah, I mean? he's, that was crooky. It's always the way to the Rangers games and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, down in Glasgow and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. What do you make of the new new manager, obviously? Uh, Giovanni Bram Broncost. Uh, Time is at an end. Yeah. Rightfully so, you think? Or think he deserved more time? I think, you know, the board didn't back him. Mm. I think. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of investment in the summer, was no. there? No. And I thought, well, you know, when we, when, we, when he came in, I thought, well, there's going to be quite a fucking lot of Dutch players coming yeah, in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, that would have been his way of, about it. And, you know, Ross Wilson just in the in the board just didn't seem to give him what he was mm-hmm. what he was and wanting, sold you know? players as well right like their yeah. money came in Calvin Bassey went to Ajax yeah. and stuff like Joe Rebo I think yeah. left as well and then I mean you know and all the players we did sign are all fucking injury prone or too old you know what mm-hmm. I mean like we're, we're signing people that are older and it's like what's wrong like we need a lot of young guys now do you know what I mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and we've got players coming to the end of contract you know we've got Alan, we've got Alan McDagger he's a goalkeeper we've got 
Um, who else have we got? Uh, I mean, look, we've got so like Stephen Davis, for example, Northern Ireland international. Mm. Like, literally, I mean, he's like incredible, but he's time's coming to an yeah, end. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's kind of, I don't know. I mean, Michael Beale, the new manager, which is, I'm kind of delighted about because I wanted him anyway. Mm hmm. Because he did, he was like the magic behind Gerard, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, was he part of the coaching setup when Gerard yeah. was at Rangers? Okay. Yeah, I mean Michael Beal was a name that you heard floating around a lot mm. because a lot of what you know, a lot of the magic you would see, like you know, when we won fifty five, we stopped yeah, down yeah, the road, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Like you know, and all the the games that you know was just like whoa, what an incredible football! Like we played really attacking football, mm. really High beautiful intensity. to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like really nice football to watch. Michael Beale and all that. And obviously Gerard, you know, he wasn't just sitting there, you know yeah. what I mean? He had But if you look at how his career has went since <clears> Michael <throat> Beale left that coaching setup and what's happened at Aston Villa. Yeah. Obviously different ball game, but still Yeah, I mean I mean obviously Michael was at um Queen's Park. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. think. And uh you know, he had a great start, but then he lost like five games on the trot before he left. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, mm, I don't know, you know, it could have just been a sticky patch with five games in the trot. It's a lot of games yeah, to lose yeah, in yeah, the yeah. But I don't know. I really like him. I think he's a great coach. So I'm I'm kind of just excited to see what he does. And you have to give a new manager time, right? Just exactly. And that's one thing managers don't get these yeah, days. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, you mentioned five games that are win there. Some people come under like serious pressure. Serious pressure. Obviously, depending on the, like, I don't want to like be disregarding any other team in the league, but if it was like Motherwell or something, like you would have less pressure. You would get a one of the old firms, time. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, same, obviously, the same down in England. With but I think it's even worse in England. Yeah. Um, just because of how much money is at stake. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Celtic and Rangers have got this massive history and tradition behind it, and it's like, yeah, it's win or fucking nothing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. There's a lot of pressure anyway. Yeah, because it doesn't so, matter. Like the money's, I know they've got a, a bit of a decent deal recently from Sky, better than mm -hmm. what it once was. Anyway, obviously it's still massively not as much as what the English league gets and stuff like that. Which I do find it's mad, isn't it? Like, it, it is mad because yeah. if you think about it, like I remember like early two thousands, even into the twenty tens, right? Mm -hmm. Like Celtic and Rangers would constantly be in Europe, would constantly yep. get to like last sixteens and play English teams. I remember uh, Rangers beat a. Uh, Oh, there was an English team they beat in the Europa League one time and Celtic, I think, played Liverpool. You know, stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, they were competing. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. it was literally like, there was no difference with, like, obviously, Celtic and Rangers, like a two-horse race, right? Yeah, exactly. Then you've kind of got Aberdeen hearts, mm. kind of struggling. They sometimes, back. like, threaten to challenge and then fall away yeah, on the odd occasion. Exactly, and it's always that way. But, like, you know, like, when you looked at the, the you know, the, Teams in England and then teams in Scotland, there was almost like no difference in quality. Mm -hmm. The players, the money. Yeah, no. Do you know what I mean? Rangers had equal, Premier League teams would have took those players at the time. Do you know what I mean? That were fighting for Champions 100%. League and the league title and stuff like that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was almost like, you know what I mean? Like there was almost like no difference. Yeah. Like, but nowadays it's just like, you another just, world man just like, look at the wages like some of the people are on down south as well. It's mental. It's ridiculous. Because I've, I've never understood and it's easy for me to say this because obviously I'm not being offered this amount of money, but I never understand when like a player leaves like one of the old firm if they're in the Champions League or could be in Europe for like a Southampton. It just, it blows my mind. It's just money, isn't it? It is just the money, right? Yeah. Like, and I suppose you can't blame them if it's three, four times the wage that they're getting up here, you know? But the, I mean, there's other ways. I mean, there's some players, you know, like say, for example, it was Stephen Davis mm -hmm. and he's, uh, I don't know, like, I think, you know, he would rather obviously play for Rangers than any club, I think. Because he's had two stints there now, right? Mm -hmm. He's had this one in the previously yeah. as well. Yeah, and he came back once, you know, things were kind of looking better mm -hmm. again. But at the same time, you know, like, you have a family. You have mouths to feed. And at the time when he was there, you know, when Rain though all that shit happened with Rangers, there wasn't any money there, yeah, do you know exactly. what I mean? So, like, yeah, I don't know. But I, I would never, I mean, if I was a football player, I would never, ever want to play for anyone else. If I was at Rangers, I wouldn't want to leave. Yeah. I don't care how much money at all for them. It's, rain, it's, it's, it's Rangers for fuck's yeah. sake. Do you know what I mean? But it's the some, bias of the fan inside you, right? Yeah, mm. ex exactly. But like another, I think, you know, if you're from England, you don't get that. Yeah. If you're from Scotland, you might understand Stand a little that. bit more. You understand what it means. Mm -hmm. It's different down in England, you know? Yeah, it's like... 
they use it as like I don't want to be disrespectful, like a stepping stone almost for like their career sometimes. Can do, yeah. yeah. Yep. And to be fair, like you know, Calvin Calvin Bassi, I've like highly rated. Like I was, I was even player. saying like United should be taking a look at him when I like first seen him. I just yeah. thought he was an incredible athlete and unbelievable. I love him, but he's great. He's a great guy as well. Yeah, yeah. Comes he came into the dressing room with Rangers and all that when when when, uh, when we played them not long ago and. He was back and he was laughing and he was like, "Remember, you got to score another goal." And, you know, yeah. and it was, uh, yeah, it was weird. He was kind of like, "Remember that dressing room's not yours anymore. Yeah, you can't yeah. go in there." So they were just laughing and joking and that. But yeah, but I, I mean, I think he's brilliant. I've kind of, I was sad to see him go. Mm-hmm. But they the bring in is, a really good fee, though. To be fair, yeah, of course, I of course. But I mean, he's a, he's he's worth his money. Yeah, I mean, he really is definitely. Um, we're missing Hollander. He just, I don't think he, I don't, I don't know if he'll ever play again for mm-hmm. us. Is he an injured or? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he was injured for like, I don't know, I can't remember how long it was. Like the Probably remainder of the season injury. and it's kind yeah. of still, yeah. So I don't, I don't know if we'll ever see him in a Rangers shirt Definitely again. seems like there needs to be a bit of a rebuild on the go there, didn't there? Yeah, I mean, Michael Beale's got the team that they won the league with, that we won 55 with, yeah. really. Mm-hmm. He's got most of the team still there. So they all know him and they all know what the football he's trying to, will be trying to get us to play again. So hopefully they kind of just listen and yeah, yeah, <laughs> do yeah. what we can do. But I want the board to back him and it's not going to work if they don't. Well, exactly. I mean, you know. Uh, we need more players. Probably an example uh, Rangers fans don't want to hear, but like, you know, me and Lee being a Celtic support, we've talked about Celtic a few times. If you look at what they did with Posta Kakoglu, where... Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's uh, got them playing better, but they also backed him heavily in the sense that they really did kind of give that whole team a facelift yeah. and went with his, like, kind of... And they're still buying players. I yeah, mean, yeah. Just bought another guy from Japan and yeah. guy and from Canada. Shock after uh, Germany won, 100, won 450 quid off of that result. So, nah. cheers, Japan. <laughs> yeah, I was absolutely shitting myself the last 10 minutes because I, <laughs> I, if Japan had scored again... Um, it was like one of those live bet things. So it was like twenty five to one for Japan to win two one when they were one 0 down with um, like uh, twenty minutes to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then when it happened, it was like like Japan nearly scored a few times again. And I was like, of a, I was gonna almost be Nicky Campbell for my the team that I wanted to uh, get me the money scored an extra goal and it <laughs> fucked me over. But um, yeah, yeah. Have you been paying much attention to the World Cup? I've I've been struggling to get into it. I must admit, it just feels like a really weird time of the year to be having it, isn't it? No, nah, not really. Not really, to be honest. Not really interested in it. I mean, unless we were in it, but that's yeah. not going to happen, is it? So, <laughs> yeah. obviously, anybody that plays England, I hope they beat them. Yeah. I mean, I really couldn't care about them, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would really like Argentina to win it because of Messi. Mm-hmm. I'm a big Messi fan. Yeah, I yeah. Don't always have been. Uh, but Spain are looking pretty good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spain yeah. are looking Definitely. Real, real good. They've got some really good young players in there mm-hmm. as well, like Gavi yeah. and uh, Pedri, I think, is the other one as well. wouldn't surprise but, me if they won it. They, wouldn't, they really wouldn't. And I think the, the best thing about the, the Spanish team, like, because, you know, we grew up in a time where Spain were dominating, like, mm-hmm. they won a Euros, World Cup and a Euros, right, which is, like, unheard of in, mm-hmm. like, modern-day football. But a lot of those players play in Spain, right? So most of them play for either Real Madrid or Barcelona. Yeah. And even now, a lot of them play for Manchester City. So, like, yeah. a lot of them know each other and know yeah, the yeah. kind of... The style that they they want to uh, want to play, it's mad that like Italy won the Euros. And they're not even there. <laughs> no, it's you know crazy. I mean? it's, it's absolutely crazy. madness. It's crazy. When I was young, Brazil were fucking yeah. incredible to watch. Brazil were like the team to watch. Like yeah. you think of R nine, you yeah. think of Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho, yeah. Like obviously, like Messi and Ronaldo, Ronaldo. will go down as like two of the greatest ever, just because of the numbers and the moments they provided. Mm. And but for me, like Ronaldinho was just on another planet. Some of the time when I was just there. Uh, Growing up, it's what he could make a ball do. Yeah, like, and and the fact that he would make like the best players in the world look like fucking idiots. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. And it you was ain't like it doing that. Trying, yeah, There's, the, you, nobody else could do that. It was phenomenal to watch, and I think you know he'll go down as you know one of the best players to ever watch. Yeah, life like to ever see him play. And I'm just lucky I grew up when he was playing. Mm-hmm. I'm just lucky I got to see him play, and uh, you know. Playing like, you know, I get guys like Kaka. Yeah. Off. You know, being able to watch guys like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. that's kind of, I'm kind of thankful that I was able to see that, you know. But, uh, yeah. Great football to watch yeah. back then. It's really different now, though. I've always wanted a Brazil Argentina final. I wanted it, especially in 2014 mm. when um, it was in Brazil, because I thought that would be the crazy, like, 
Yeah. They would have had to shut the entire country down because that <laughs> riot would have been unreal. That would have been nuts. That would have been absolutely nuts. It nearly happened as well, but that was the one where um, Germany decided to clean Brazil out good and proper in their, their own backyard. Germany, they're not a slouch. Like, no. That's a team you don't want to fucking... Even like over the years when you would say they haven't had as great as teams, they're still a threat just oh, yeah. because of yeah, yeah. who they are, you know? Yeah, they're great. Um, I mean, they're not being so well at the minute, but... Yeah. but Can't um, rule them out. It's no, when you least expect no. them to win it, they go and that's win it, it, you know? That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's always been Germany. <laughs> I, um, but I, I've, I've watched a few games and like background noise and stuff like that, but I just feel like, I just feel like the time of year, you can't get invested in it. I'm also thinking, I don't know if you've noticed this, but the amount of added time they're putting on to these games is ridiculous. If you think about these players are going straight back into the club season after this is over, like mm. I think they get like a week off. The amount of injuries that's going to happen for everyone. Yeah. You know, and you just think of the stuff like it's gonna really fuck up club club football. Yeah, I, I, you know what? You know the the best moment for me so far has been seeing Christian Eriksen play for Denmark again after what happened. At, um, Absolutely love it. Uh, after what happened at the Euros, and obviously like he plays for the team that I support now. I think I actually mentioned on here uh, when he was playing for Brentford. I wouldn't mind picking him up on a free transfer, which is exactly what happened. Udini Hutchin strikes again, but. Um, I just I think he's a great dude, and obviously the story behind it and how close he was to like losing his life. Do you know what I mean? The I was watching it as it happened, as it unfolded, mm -hmm. and then seeing him come on the pitch for Denmark, I was like, "It's awesome, isn't it? It's, it's like a big circle, and it's like it's why you love sport. Those yeah, kind of stories, fucking you know? amazing, fucking amazing. One of the best moments, like I've like for a long time I've seen on on football. It was great to see him come back on the pitch and be able to do that because. I mean, the fact that he survived it was incredible. Yeah. But then again, being able to actually play football professionally. I mean, I mean, even if you just went and played for a smaller club, yeah, you know, yeah, and then yeah. he didn't play international, mm -hmm. you, you know, I think you would have been thankful for that. But the fact that he was able to come back at the highest, come back level, at the highest yeah. level and play the highest level, just phenomenal. Like I was looking at his stats at Brentford and when he, because they signed him on a six month deal, um, and he was putting up like I think he was only second behind Kevin De Bruyne in the Premier League. So like the you know his quality is like undeniable. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, awesome you know, that'll dude go down well. in history. That'll, yeah. that's a, that's a, that's amazing, absolutely amazing. It's a shame that Haaland's not there though. Uh, even yeah. though like he plays for uh, a rival, as I see it, um, it's quite disgusting what he's doing. Uh, in the league um, obviously Norway didn't qualify and me, I, me and Lee talked about this uh, a couple months ago before this was coming up I was like if Norway had qualified yeah. would we have given them the dark horse just because of Haaland and he was like yeah it was like you know he's a, he's an absolute terminator isn't he like, he's, he's that just... player that you can take on and win the game himself exactly yeah he's dangerous very dangerous and he's probably the best player in the world in a minute I and would say we're kind of seeing this uh, new as Messi and Ronaldo are coming to the end of their careers we're seeing this kind of new rivalry between Haaland and Mbappe. Hmm. I'm a Haaland fan myself. I, me I, as well. I think I Mbappe's got a stinking attitude. 100%. Um, phenomenal player. Like I can I can There's, see the talent in him, but... But it's the fact that he uses... He knows he's talented and he knows that he... He thinks he's a god, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like him for that. Yeah. Do I think he's a great player? 100%. Yeah. He's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But, nah. Yeah, I'm more like, of a Haaland fan. I'm with yeah. you on that. 100%. He's just he's more business as usual, business focused rather than you can tell. Mbappe was playing the game a little bit. Like everyone expected him to go to Real Madrid. Then he signed that new mad deal at PSG. I can't believe they gave him like yeah. was that a two hundred million pound signing on fee. Yeah. I he wanted to be like part of the board or something. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to make decisions on the managers. Ali B was telling me about that. I couldn't fucking believe that. Is, that. that as soon as some, like, I don't care what club you are, as soon as a player comes and says that to you, just should be gone. doesn't yeah. matter how good they are yeah. or whatever, you know. That's that's just telling you, like, he's going to, what else is he going to try and get into next? Yeah. You know? Nah, fuck I mean, he's already man. wanting to leave again, right? Like, six months in because he's, he's not playing the position he wants. And it's like, come on, dude. You're playing with two of the other greatest players in the world in Neymar and um, uh, Lionel Messi. Yeah. You've got an absolute unreal chance. They're probably the best chance PSG will ever get to win the Champions League. Yeah. In my opinion, I haven't watched them so far this season. But um, 
Yeah, man. Just think of that, dude. I think he I hope he changes it. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously still he's still really a young, young guy, isn't he? so yeah. maybe it comes with maturity and stuff like that. But then, if we look at the situation with Cristiano Ronaldo recently and the <laughs> interview he gave, that dude's thirty eight. So sometimes that ego's never going to go, and sometimes that ego makes people the great players they are. Right? See, you when you look at Messi, though, you don't see that. No, and the the thing you is, don't with, see that. the thing is with Ronaldo, I think the reality with him is, is he's kind of struggling to come to terms with that he's not. The he's player not what he was. He once was, yeah, you know, and yeah. he can't run as fast. He can't make the balls that he's, you know, like he's a three ball or something. He can't make it. Mm-hmm. Like I seen him. There was one time he went out for a throw and he couldn't make it, and he just started laughing. He was yeah, like, "Yeah, yeah." I thought he's just yeah, not yeah. what it was, you know. Uh, and I think you know, there's a lot of frustration there. I can see it. And he's had like what two decades of non-stop praise. So I suppose it is going to be difficult when 100%. things become hard. Yeah. Yeah. When everybody's, when you're in the papers every day, da- every day, like when, you know, there's, there's literally, um, you know, you're on the news all the time, all this sort of stuff. And then from, from that to being, you're on the news because you, you're yeah. slowing down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's quite shit. And obviously like he wasn't starting as many games and at the end of the day, like Eric Ten Hag's not there to you know, aid his ego. He's there to win He's there games to win for games. Man United. Otherwise, he'd and lose his job. And the fact he left annoyed me. That the fact that I can understand his frustration, mm-hmm. but he could have like just stayed there and just waited out yeah. instead of leaving. Giving that Eve interview definitely, um, yeah, it put a bad taste in the mouth of a lot of people. Right, like coming out and say you don't respect your manager. There's better ways of going, but if even if they just came, like you know, blanking people like Gary Neville and stuff like that, just because he was saying, I think they should part ways. Yeah. It's like, if you can't take any co- sort of criticism whatsoever without, you know... Yeah, it kind of blew my mind, to be honest, really. Um, I kind of knew it was coming. I knew mm. that he wanted out. That's the whole reason he gave that interview, and he got what he wanted in the end. So, all the best to him, wherever he ends up. I seen he tried to claim that goal the other night. Uh, he'll, be playing, is, he'll be playing for a loss, say, next. Hi, <laughs> here. Here, I'm here for it if he does. But <laughs> if you thought he was throwing his arms about at United, wait until he sees Grant Park on a Saturday. But, um, the burn a go. Yeah, I've been to a few games recently. I must admit, I haven't been to Grant Park uh, probably for seven years beforehand. So I went, and it is absolutely crazy. Like, the level of even, you would say, grassroots football is getting to, or even part-time football, a lot of the guys that are, are playing part-time. Like, the, yeah. the level that I remember maybe 10 years ago yeah. compared to now, you can tell, it's just went on leaps and bounds. And uh, thankfully, every time I've went since Lossy, I've picked up three points. So <laughs> good to see I'm not uh, wasting my money on that. Um, good luck, Charm. Hi. <laughs> uh, but there was also a raffle there for uh, Alibi. Obviously, he's needing a knee surgery. Um, yeah, he got it. Oh, did he? Awesome. Yeah, he's in recovery now. So um, he was at mine on Sunday. He's just been able to drive again now. So he's he's off clutches and stuff. He's at physio every Monday, I think, and yeah, he's doing well. So yeah, is he plan? Is take his planning on coming back to football when he feels? I feels think ready? so. Yeah, I mean, it, it all you know, granted, everything goes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, and it's he obviously feels something you don't want to rush back from. Yeah. No, exactly. You can't really. I mean, it was you know, pretty thingy surgery. So mm-hmm. yeah, but hopefully, I hope, I'd like to see him playing again. Like, yeah, no, definitely. Um, so one of the other things that I wanted to talk about. Um, and it's, you know, we've we've kind of been quite positive in that so far, but I feel like the amount of shit I've been seeing on this, I feel like it's hard not to talk about it, but the amount of anti-social behaviour that's going around around this area at the moment is absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Um, early in the year, uh, I mean, it's happening a lot around Lossy at the moment. Um, at the weekend, actually, when we had Fraser Wilkinson in, mm. um, the amount of police cars that were going about with lights on and stuff like that, it's obviously to do, you know, it's been happening in this area of uh, like where we both live, which will uh, remain nameless because we don't want the studio getting uh, apples thrown <laughs> and stuff like that. But um, uh, like even at this, I don't know if you've seen the video earlier in the year of the bus driver getting beaten up. Was it in Keith and stuff like that? Yeah, I heard about that. And just this kind of, so I'm going to be careful with how I'm going to say this because I understand that people in their teen years are going to do stupid stuff and they'll regret it and they'll mature from that and learn as they go on. But I think this is different this specific kind of behavior yeah i mean they're doing things that are that is like extreme like when we were young we were we were stupid and we'd do silly things and we'd be teenagers and we might swear and do stupid like you know regret yeah. like things you would regret you know like 
you know, you might throw a snowball at... And it broke a window or a football, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, piloting buses and all that sort of stuff. But, like, pulling knives. Yeah. And beating up bus drivers. Like, yeah. why? Steer. What for? I mean, like, one of our... Uh, a mutual friend that we have, uh, uh, Crookie, I'm sure he won't mind being named, had his doorbell stolen, right? And obviously we had like a, a bit of a laugh about that earlier, but it's yeah. been happening and it's been targeting people that are elderly, that need that for their carers. And mm-hmm. like, I think one didn't actually hear her carers when they went without care for over 24 hours. You know, serious consequences to what uh, they're doing. The other night it was apples against cars. Someone's car is damaged because of that. Now think about the claims bonus and stuff that has to go through there. The thing is though, right? They'll do that to the wrong person. Yeah. They might fucking instantly regret that. Yeah. You might, you know, you might regret it in ten th- years or something, but you might regret that ten seconds mm. after you done that. It could be the wrong person that you do that to. Yeah. They don't think about that. They no. don't. They're not thinking at all. They're thinking. All they're thinking about is impressing people and getting a reputation. Yeah. Maybe because you watch too much movies, or you think you're a TV gangster, or and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I yeah, mean, yeah. it's like that's not the real world. The real world is very, very fucking tough, and someone will catch you for that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's blown my mind how the police haven't been able to catch mm. catch them yet. Because I would imagine, and obviously I'm no like investigator or whatever, but I would imagine that the people that have been throwing apples at cars the other night are the, probably the same contingent of people yeah. that have been stealing the doorbells and stealing stuff from people's gardens and stuff mm-hmm. like that um you know you see groups of teenagers hanging around shops and stuff like that i'm not saying that it's definitely them and stuff but you would think it would be something along those lines um but like i, I agree with you i think if the police don't catch up to them quick enough it, you know something there will be some kind of consequence to it right it's just inevitable of how things like this go and I just I struggle to it blows my mind that people seem to get some sort of enjoyment out of like terrorizing especially vulnerable people in their community because all this ever achieves engaging in this behavior is making is makes you a coward and a bully you know what I mean that's all it's ever going to achieve it doesn't give you some kind of rep you know on a wider uh, scale outside your friends group it doesn't give you any kind of oh look at how hard that person is or whatever you know people is going through yeah. people's minds but it's um we have a guest on well no actually we're going to a guest uh next week um i'll not say who but it's someone that i will be posing this question to as well because i think it's something that definitely needs addressed it can't continue to go on there's got to be some yeah. kind of um action put in place to stop people being terrorized like this and that but um there is going to be someone that they're gonna they're gonna hit their car with an apple and some guy is going to be an absolute, like, doesn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And he will, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what he would do, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like, he won't care that they're 14, 15. Yeah, exactly, he won't give yeah. a shit. Like, they, they're not thinking. And it's just, I don't, yeah, I don't want to see, I don't want to see anyone getting hurt. So, I yeah. mean, not around here. I don't want to see anyone getting hurt at all. So, I mean, like, I think kids nowadays are way more extreme. Mm-hmm. And I think there might be even less intelligent. Yeah. Because who in the right mind would start pulling blades on others? And like, if you've got a problem, talk out. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Or, you know, if you have to, fisticuffs or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Knives, man. Like, Jesus, fuck. Yeah. It's, it's a dangerous game, right? You know, um, and I think obviously what you're saying there. I think there's a sense, and I can understand with young people sometimes, because it happened to us when we were younger as well, is back in my day thing, you know, you've got it better than, than we had it. And um, I don't necessarily think that's true. I think there's different um, situations that come up when young people come along. Like, for example, I think we were like the last generation that wasn't fully blown and introduced to the internet. Like we had the, I don't want to say the old world, but pre uh we had tech. people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it wasn't full gone no. metaverse stuff that's going on now, right? Um, whereas obviously now there's like stuff like cyberbullying. Like you don't just get bullied at school and it gets cleared up there. You get bullied and people might not even know about it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, Things like grooming and stuff. Yeah, no, 100% as well. Like fucking. Yeah. I think the less I thought about that, the better, yeah. to be honest. Just. Yeah. Yeah, but like I, I understand that there's obviously stuff that like young people go through that maybe wants to make them rebel and, and stuff like that. But I also think stuff like the internet and 
certain content that people watch and stuff like that will influence them and if it's negative content they're watching it's going to influence them in a negative way right you know um I think sometimes in the way you're brought up to yeah no 100 percent. like what's going on at home and stuff you know mm. like i think that can have something to do with it yeah and that's obviously we're not going to blame like young people for their upbringings and stuff like that i think that's obviously on um services and local authorities and that to to make sure that these situations don't progress into people yeah. getting into that type of behaviour. I mean, sometimes and, they come from a working class home or, or or even more. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they're still doing things like that. You know? Yeah, it's, it's on the extremes. It's either extreme, like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't say poverty, but extreme kind of hardship or extreme wealth, isn't it? Yeah. Like, that this kind of behaviour happens. You never see it kind of, I've, like, in the middle of people. I've also heard about, like, hard drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these kids are young teens yeah 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 like what the f like what the fuck where do you even get in it yeah. from do you know what i mean well they say that a lot of it's being done via snapchat and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah. which is mad and you have to kind of question the social media companies at yeah. that point of like how can you just i mean we've had the i don't know if you kept up the story with the young girl the the ruling over her looking at content that was to do with stuff like suicide and stuff like that Aye, that's right i've seen and that it blows your mind when you hear shit like that that was, yeah they it, can't moderate stuff like fuck that Fuck that there was like all these videos about suicide and, and and like saying that it's that it's exactly what you should do this is how you do it mm -hmm. this is the best way to do it there's no there's no point in living like what the fuck yeah like how is that even allowed on there yeah, it's it's mental and they always pass the responsibility off as well as like these are multi million dollar companies and i'm not going to name them but yeah, yeah, there's, yeah there's a lot of them do you know what i mean yeah 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 and that's like the the thing about um social media i mean i'm sure you've probably watched the social dilemma as well it was a film yeah. that came out a few years ago yeah but the algorithm stuff is absolutely crazy especially when it's explained to you and you start seeing it in your your own life like yeah. and i'm not just talking about uh like what you're watching on the internet or what you're shopping for or whatever it, that is because, I mean, that's a lot of people, uh, when they hear, oh, the internet's watching you, they freak out. It's like, why are they watching? You know what I mean? Like, they make it like, the, oh, why do they want to throw me in jail or something like that? It's not that. They're they're doing it because they want to put stuff in front of your face to exploit you as a yeah. consumer, right? They're listening to us right now. Yeah, exactly. Why do you think our phones are fit with microphones? Yeah, exactly. It's not just to talk to people. I, I think I mentioned to, the, you, uh, to this to you before, but on uh, here, I've got, uh, like, the highest security norton because obviously i don't want to like lose yeah. uh, videos and stuff like that and um, so it's like it's the extra protection as you can get but it has a, a part where it shows me who's tracking me on the internet i remember you telling me and about the this. first one's facebook facebook and yeah. that's with all the opt-out options selected and stuff like that yeah. so obviously there's like political loopholes and ways in the small print and obviously like they're not uh they're not government regulated because they're all uh what do you call it like is it limited companies or something yeah, like yeah, they have like their own kind of uh, like they're not moderated in any way and I know it's a bit of a it's a bit of a slippy slope when people in the government try and get involved in what can they do and what they can't do because people bring up like free market free speech all this type of stuff yeah. but when it does get to like the extremities of influence and influencing someone to like take their own life mm. it's it's madness you know yeah. like just as an example from the algorithm experience of myself I decided to stop drinking for a month when I was having a bit of a bad time right and i started uh, going to counseling and i'm you know i'm happy to like say stuff like that right like we we're talking about you should Nothing talk about that, these man. things like, right none. but um i decided i'm not going to drink because what i tended to find is when i was feeling bad i was like, i'm gonna go get some beers tonight and yeah. I, it would just be pushing it away it wouldn't be dealing with it no it no no it would just be pushing it down the line and making yourself feel worse it, i mean yeah and then i would say for about the next week my facebook feed was filled with drinking memes yeah. like stuff that would make you laugh like mm -hmm. and i was just thinking i knew what it was when i was seeing it i was like this is because i've said that i'm not i'm yeah. not drinking and it's trying to where the fuck else is it getting yeah, from it's trying to influence me to go and drink and i was thinking about it in a deeper way of imagine if it's like someone that's maybe not conscious of that and maybe they like have like a an issue with alcohol do you know what i mean the amount of influence and then i was thinking about it even more in terms of i think i have that kind of influence your thinking on a certain person or uh, ways of voting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's a really dangerous, powerful thing yeah, that these social media companies have um, created, right? And it's all to do with clicks, engagements, That's it. and that. And it seems it seems really weird because it's like, how could they monetize that? But they've obviously found a way to do it, and it is... The crazy thing is, right, uh, uh, there's a lot of times this has happened to me. There was one time I'm, I asked my mum, I was like, what do you want for your Christmas? 
or her birthday, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, she was like, she told me there was this like jacket that she really liked, mm-hmm. right? I was like, cool, I'll buy it, right? There's no problem. She told me where to get it and all that sort of stuff. She told me what colour she wanted and all that, right? So I was like, cool. I was like, I'll get it tomorrow or whatever, you know, because I can't remember what I was doing. I think I was playing Xbox or something. Yeah, yeah. So the next morning I wakes up, right? I'm scrolling down my newsfeed. The exact jacket, the exact colour on the ex- exact website yeah. on Facebook. It was like, there. I was like, what the... I've not even searched for that. So how the fuck is that there? Yeah. That's not a coincidence because it's not the only time it's happened. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, there's been loads of times where I was talking about, um, I was talking to uh, one of my mates, Jordan, on Xbox, and we're talking about, I was going to buy new something for my controller because I've got like, um, paddles on the back. Ah, like the scuff type of things. Yeah, yeah, scuff controller, exactly. And uh, I was like, yeah, I need to buy new scuff paddles and, and then, like, I was literally, we finished that game of search. I was going down into my Facebook, as I do in between games, boom, it's right there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I have not searched for them yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. And it's just there. It's and just it, recognizing it's words, what you're saying. Constantly. But it's, it happens every week to me mm-hmm. about things that, you know, I was talking about a Christmas present and, you know, it started giving me Christmas ideas. Yeah, yeah. And it's, <laughs> that's the thing, like, this has got to be a massive breach of data protection. Yeah. Like, having worked in, like, um, certain office, uh, not certain office and stuff like that, I was, like, trained on data protection and how you protect data of, like, clients you work with and stuff like that. And this has got to be, like, a massive breach of it, right? Because mm-hmm. you can't just... I know it's not exactly like someone's listening like the FBI to mm-hmm. you. It's like it's identifying words that you're saying mm-hmm. and putting it through to like these AI systems that are then putting it in front of your it's face. It's kind of like right? an Alexa and it's got like this massive, you know, um, collective data sort of fucking, um, I don't know, where it collects data or like kind of like the internet, but like it listens to what you're saying and then it's kind of pushing things through to your device, you know? It's yeah. weird the way it works. I don't understand it. And it's weird how we're we're kind of comfortable with it as a species. Like, we know it's there. It's pretty mainstream accepted that, like, it's happening. But it's comfortable if you've got something in your hand, right? If you want to know something, you can in 10 seconds. Yeah, in instantly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty fucking cool because if you grew up not used to it, like, so when I was a kid, I didn't have that. Mm. But, like, for example, my little cousin, he's, like, I don't know, nine or 10 or whatever. Mm. Like... He 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 has one of these things, and it's like he can he can literally do anything he want. He can he can literally figure out anything he wants to figure out. Back in the day, you had to go look up in the dictionary or whatever. You know, you had to learn what something meant. You could yeah, just Google yeah, it. Yeah. it right. Everything is 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 literally right there in your hand. Because the internet, I don't think it's. Uh, I heard a good answer one time. They asked if they thought uh, the internet was a good or a bad thing, and yeah. the person responded with depends. Which I think is the right way to view it, right? Because you met the stuff that you mentioned is very much correct, and there's a very much the positive side on the internet. But I also think to counteract that, it probably loses people's social skills yeah. because we're getting more and more and more involved online, right? Like our social medias, our bank accounts, everything that we do in life can be done through the phone a lot of the time. You know? I think everybody should be made to go camping at least twice a month. Yeah, yeah, some S- something to like get or out, more. To, yeah, spend spend some time in nature, and I, I'm sitting there here saying this but i don't do it but i'll tell you one thing i would love to do that but i say that you know what i mean but i really would actually love to do that you know i'd like to spend more time it's good for your mental health to get you know yeah back. i mean i i see you going out walks all the time yeah, man. that clears the head you know what i mean just one little lap around the town yeah yeah yeah. it's amazing what i can do you would never ever think i also you know? saved the dog a couple of weeks ago <laughs> on one of my walks yes so uh i do a lap of the town just because it's like the easiest right most time although there's been roadworks everywhere we've been going so i've had to like circumnavigate certain Mm. areas of and actually it's forced me to go ways in lossy that i didn't actually know were there like yeah it's weird that i've been living here for like 25 years or (laughs) whatever and i'm i think when's this street been here is like the entirety of the time you've been yeah been living here but um so i was going past where you know where the golf course is and then there's like St. Margaret's Crescent and then there's like those houses that face it. Yeah. So I was coming up there and I seen a dog next to a fence and it was just kind of stuttering about there but there was a couple coming towards me so I just thought like it's the couple's it's dog. dog yeah. It's cool with being off the lead or whatever. But then when I turned back I seen the couple were continuing going like I ignored the dog and the dog was now following me so I was like right 
this dog's not with its owner quite evidently so I, like I, I petted it and that but i didn't want to like grab its lead because i thought it might freak out and yeah. then it runs off but it was pitch black right so i think it was about half six at night or something like that um and uh it was going along like these houses and going into the garden so i i got onto the phone uh was it 101 that's the non-emergency police yeah. number uh trying to get hold of the police but it would have been a like a 15 minute wait which obviously like you don't really have that much time because no. the dog then started crossing the road so then it went down like this dark alley bit so i thought it maybe went towards the golf course and then there was, I heard there was this car coming but i heard the chain on its neck rattling so i knew it was coming towards so I can't, this was a bit of a blur because it, I didn't have time to think because I was like, the dog's going to come. It's coming out of a blind spot in the dark. The car has absolutely no, no idea, chance of man. seeing it. Um, and I, I can't stand the idea of a thought of like an animal getting hurt in front of me or something like that. It's just, it would have, it would have proper broken me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know that that sounds a bit like drastic, but, uh, so I can't remember. I, I either waved the car down or I got out into the road, but I managed to stop the car. And then the car went past and I seen the dog, I think the dog listened to me shout stop or something like that. And it, it was like sitting there. So I was like, Phew. so then it came back across and thankfully a runner was going by and we managed to kind of um, calm the dog down. And I was like, is it okay if you like gently just kind of hold on? I think it was, I think her name was Vera or something. We found out from her caller, her. And then I found the number, uh, got hold of the owner and then she go back to her owner safe and sound. But for like a, Walking back after that, I was like, Jesus, do you know what I mean? Like, it just all came out of nowhere. And Well, that could have been very different if it wasn't for you, you know Yeah, what I mean? yeah. That I'm, dog could have been, you know. So. Yeah, and I'm not patting myself on the back or anything. Like, I think it was just... No, nah, but you still did a good thing, yeah, do you know what I mean? That dog could have do, been... You know, and that dog could have been... That could have been... That, that could have ended up different. No, 100%. So, yeah, yeah you know, you're, you did a good thing. So. But, uh... Out of my... <laughs> many adventures that I have out of my walks, the last thing you'd uh, expect. But... We're, we're coming closer to Christmas. Um, it's the 1st of December tomorrow. Oh, happy St. Andrew's Day. It's uh, St. Andrew's Day today. Oh, is it? Yeah, I, it's that. Um, I removed. should know that, but I didn't. I know, but I didn't even know it until I woke up this morning and finally went on the internet and <laughs> seen it, you know, after talking all that smack. Well, I did see a post with a big Scottish flag, but I didn't even read the post. Because so. it's like, obviously, each country in the Union has one, right? So there's like us, uh, St. George's for England, mm -hmm. St. Patrick's, well, Ireland's not part of Ireland's part of the union I don't want to like cause all those troubles again you know um, uh, and Wales is it St Peter's I'm not sure I might have got that or St James's forgive me if I've absolutely butchered that any Welsh people that are watching um, feel free to kind of correct me in the comments my mate Ian will be raging right oh now. yeah no, I know I know Ian as well, <laughs> Ian as well. <laughs> you know what you know you, you know his personality yeah, yeah. So you, you, you'd be, you'd be fucking elated. Yeah, so proud Welshman. Oh, he's a great man. He's in Wales right now. I think he's watching the Wales games in Wales, and I was like, oh, drastic. Yeah, that's got to be <laughs> so bad. But yeah. So here, see that what, the the documentary that we watched, man. Like, I liked it. it yeah, good. stats. What was it like? One hour fifty or one hour thirty? Uh, one hour thirty, I think. Yeah, it was good, man. Like, I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. Like, well, I I said to you just as before we came on, Mike, that. Uh, I, I was in my bed one night and I was watching um, I was looking for something to watch sorry and it came up and you know we were mentioning about how we both kind of really like Jonah Hill as an actor yeah so I, I seen the, the little description that Netflix gives you of the film and that and I, it kind of drew me to it because it was um, it had that black and white filter on it most of the time um, I like that and it, yeah it made it a lot more eerie I thought it was good it was good to like kind of keep focusing that but for those um, and intimate yeah definitely uh, for those who haven't or don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the new uh, film, I guess, documentary from Jonah Hill on his therapist, Phil Stutz. Yeah. And the the for anyone wanting to watch it, it's on Netflix and the, the, the film is called Stutz, S-T-U-T-Z. So it focuses around his therapist, Phil Stutz, who's been, you know, pretty much a psychotherapist since his 20s, I'm pretty sure he says. Mm -hmm. Like, um, he has Parkinson's. Yeah, uh, and he had that since he was twenty one, which is brutal. Like we were talking about, he fell asleep for three days, yeah, and then went and got tested, and yeah, and to think that at like that age, obviously Parkinson's is obviously quite a devastating thing. No matter what but age, you think. I mean, you think of it as something you, it's you get when you were older, 
And like when you kind of think of like, I don't know, like Sir Billy Conley, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you think of him, like obviously he got it when he was older. So I didn't know you could get it that young until I saw that. Mm-hmm. And I felt for him, you know. I mean, he had that his whole life and it's fucked a lot of things up for him. Yeah, yeah. You know, having relationships and stuff like that because it was health. It wasn't, but you know, he was, he mentioned that in the documentary. I don't want to spoil too much, but yeah, it was absolutely brilliant, brilliant watch. I thought it was good that Jonah turned a lot of the questions round on him. Round on quite him, yeah. You know, which was, yeah. I thought it was good to like hear um, his thoughts on it. And he did like think about it as well. Like he, there's a, a part where he talks about um, a specific uh, relationship in his life that mm. he'd kind of been on and off and uh, you know he was mentioned that things had got in the way and stuff like that as happens in a lot of people's lives with relationships with other people and stuff like that yeah. but um, it, it, like you said it was great to see like the amount of care that they had for each, for each other, other as well. yeah. it, was, it was a very very beautiful thing you know and um, you can tell he's had a massive impact on Jonah's well-being and self self-worth right I mean I didn't know Jonah before like obviously you don't know him. Yeah. You know him as an actor and you know him like the movies. Yeah, but you hadn't seen in. him in that kind of setting. Yeah, but like it's almost like the guy, like since he's been going to that, you can tell that he's actually more intelligent than he was before. Mm-hmm. And you get that because of what you see the like what how that professional the guy is and like his ideas and how he deals with certain things, mental health, anxiety and all that sort of thing. Like, you know, the 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 pyramid. Yeah, yeah, and the yeah. Three levels of the pyramid. The life forces. You literally it. sort these three, you will be happy. Like mm-hmm. this. Said world. about eighty-five percent of your problems like, can be sorted. It's ridiculous. Like, yeah. and he says, "Listen, then it will work." And you can tell that he ain't fucking joking. Mm-hmm. Like, the He's guy knows his talker. shit. Yeah, and it, and it's like it's funny. Like when you look at life, it's so like um complicated. There's so much shit, and when you're looking at your phone all the time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. see if you just kind of like take a bit of time for yourself and simplify, simplify it. Simplify it. Write exactly. things it down. Right out of my life. And like, it it doesn't take that much to actually make your life that bit better. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. And that guy really got that across to me. Um, and obviously he's had a massive impact on Jonah. I mean, you can tell, like, how much they actually like they do actually love each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, like I mean, he, you can literally see that. It's cool. The end of the film. Like, ugh, I probably shouldn't spoil it, but. Um, skip this next 10 seconds if you don't want to hear this part and watch the film or watch the film come back continue the podcast um, at the end they are, he says I want you to say why you started this documentary and then I want, to say, I want you to hear what you now think you did the documentary for and he says I wanted to do this to show other people Phil's uh, methods and stuff like that and then the, the final kind of thought from him is I actually did this because I love Phil and stuff like that and it was it was really really powerful stuff mm-hmm. and they talk a lot about um how we struggle with loss in life you know and i think every human does it's um it's a it's a fear of us right we don't want to lose people close to us we don't yeah. want to lose our own life and, and all that, that uh, type of stuff but there's a lot of really i actually took notes mate like some of the stuff like cause he does i thought a, about it but i did think about taking notes mm-hmm. but i was so like focused on, on, the, the, on what was going on yeah i was yeah, like yeah. nah fuck it i was just like and if i want to go back to it i can't yeah you know and it was cool how we drew a lot of the things as well like you mentioned the pyramid with yeah. um your physical well-being your relationship yeah. with others and yourself uh but one of the, the my favorite one personally and it, the one that like kind of um resonates with me the most is i he mentions the ha- uh, the kind of key to being content in that is being happy with living in uncertainty because mm-hmm. like yeah. we never know what's going to happen and I'm someone that doesn't deal well with uncertainty no, I've, no, got am to, I. You kinda, I've got to know you know yeah you kind of feel safe in your little box yeah you know there's like comfort there but um to kind of combat that uh, and try and be more comfortable with it the the pearl um method that he uses about making everything the same value and not <laughs> blowing stuff up in your head is everything that you do in a day or a week or, or whatever is the same value and that i've been trying to apply that to it's what's great, going on uh, with me yeah and kind of like even just making your bed can be a pearl exactly you yeah. know like it doesn't mean like you can make your bed or win an oscar it's still a fucking yeah, pearl exactly. you know what i mean it doesn't matter the size it's still the same worth value and uh i, was, I laughed at the turd bit yeah, 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 but yeah a turd yeah. on the pearl but it, it it doesn't matter because you're always going to get little bits that aren't perfect anyway. Exactly. Not yeah. every pearl is going to be perfect. But like, exactly, you know, like just making your bed or 
having a number one single or like it's the same value. exactly yeah yeah which is a great way of looking at it because then it kind of disarms the value shit of your mind so mm-hmm. like everything you can like a lot of people think these days is i have this much money my clothes is worth this i'm wearing four grand's worth of clothes mm. i have this phone i have this and that's like it, it, it doesn't mean anything yeah, it doesn't matter Do you know what i mean it doesn't mm. mean anything and people try to compensate with those things to try and make themselves feel better a lot of yeah. the time right Exa- that's exactly it it's kind of like you're trying to fill a gap mm-hmm. but like you know like if, if, if you lo- like you could be like a, a billionaire right but you lose your mother or you lose a brother or you lose a father it's almost like that money and shit don't matter mm. you've been disarmed like you've literally been disarmed of all of it because you don't you don't give a fuck what it is you would give all that away money to get away them to back the, uh, 100%. You know? and it's like I've seen that in the, in the documentary you know when Jonah lost his brother obviously and he took a picture of him yeah 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 and you could literally see a man that had been through some shit through some shit and all the riches and all the, the, the fame that he had literally he like you could see it in his eyes he didn't give a fuck about even that. like the struggles with like relationships with people that he knew and that like obviously they bring his his, uh, his mum in as well and they have a chat about how things have worked out uh, for them over the years and it's like really constructive and it seems it's almost like getting a live version of what like a session would look like which i found like really yeah. interesting um i kind of thought i i wanted to see more with his mum yeah it wasn't yeah. as much but i would have actually like this in a little bit more of it of of her in it because it was it was i thought it was funny that phil like was always trying to turn it into a session each time and jonah would keep like i'm not going to talk about that because yeah. there's films about you and then he kind of opened up a bit more about it and it added to it and it was good man is I, I i would seriously encourage anyone that's watching this to give Stutz a watch, right? Um, whether like you're even having a bad time or not, I just think it's a really interesting, um, you know, film to to watch. And uh, yeah, I f- one of the things that I thought was interesting as well is Jonah went to him like, if you were to take it and not see the film, you would think Jonah must have went to this guy when he was really heavy and he was getting all the criticism and stuff like that and all the shit that he's had to face yeah. through stuff like that but it was actually when he was in the best shape he yeah. was having like these films and like uh it was 2017 like he'd been in wolf of wall street and i mean like, this all guy was movies. literally at the top of the game yeah and he had everything he had well he didn't have everything but you know what i mean like yeah. he had money he had the great career he had the job and he had you know he had all this but and then he was still going to see this guy because he wasn't right. He yeah. didn't feel right. You know what I mean? It just shows you that you can have all the fucking things, like all the riches, all the... It means nothing. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's great to have and you, you could, you know, if you if you like, you know, certain things, it's great to have, but... Mm. It's not the main thing in life. It doesn't... It doesn't... It's hard to explain it, but it, it just doesn't define you. No. No. And then I think, you know, we've kind of blurred the lines over the years, especially with people that do make a lot of money that you notice it extremely that it's almost like they, they use materials to validate themselves in some way. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, I, I saw a thing, there was a guy that said that he knew 10 billionaires and not one of them was happy. Yeah. He said, they're the most miserable people I know. Do you think that's why, like, people with that amount of money are always chasing to do something groundbreaking yeah like, I mean it's keeping them occupied yeah 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 and then when you get there see like say you make a billion pounds right you have more money than you can ever spend in your entire life right why like these guys would probably just keep chasing they've already got to where they wanted to be but they can't stop yeah because if they stop then they go okay well now what yeah who am I you know, what the fuck is this? Questions, and then yeah. you see the billion pound in the bank and you go, oh, okay, I have yeah, everything. It doesn't now. change anything. It, yeah. what, what do you do next? Do you know what I mean? And I think a lot of people are in that position. And uh, But like a lot of people that have nothing are the happiest people for some reason. I remember Dan Bozzetti and saying like he has a lot of money, right? Yeah, he has yeah, a lot yeah. of shit. And he's got, he's had all the cars, the houses, the fucking planes watches fucking clothes everything right yeah has parties all the time one of the most known people on the planet yeah he's like has all these chicks at his parties yeah yeah yeah. like he literally has everything he could possibly want and he said the best to see all these parties that are happening he might go and have a good time for an hour these parties last days days. (laughs) 
he might have a good time for an hour and then he's fed up of it. Yeah. And it's like, I think he said that the most, the best day he ever had with his mates cost nothing. They were, well, they went out in the nature, took some shrooms. I don't promote that, but, yeah. saying, but he had a great day and he said it cost him nothing. It was like the, the best day out that he ever had with his mates and he had a really good time and it cost him nothing. When you have all these parties, it costs millions and millions and he has it all this. Yeah. And he said, there was it a day almost that... almost like yeah. makes you apathetic towards things, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah, it's it's an interesting one, but um, our, our hour is at an end, my friend. It is going by very quickly. It's very, very good to catch up with you again. We are planning on doing Seshcast this year, so I'm hoping that we can Seshcast, get... Seshcast, aye. The, the full gang together, me, you, Paul, and we'll have Lee. Um, it'll be like the meetup of the, the creators and... Um, uh, we're the other side of We're the side of it. It's like more chill. You guys are... Yeah, 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 yeah. More like you do all the interviews. Yeah, I mean... You do I'm, the hard work. We just turn up and No, 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 not at all. Shit. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, like, I don't even think I'm great at like, the interview stuff. Like, I get mad anxious before... Nah, you're fucking good at it, man. Like, you, you've... You completely, like, I knew you years ago, and you're completely different. Mm-hmm. You're a different person now. Like, I never I thought you would be that kind of guy. Yeah, to, no. I, you, you're I've good at talking. That's probably your best. I've definitely um, pushed the boundaries on that and tried to, because there was one point that I wasn't good at talking and stuff like that. Um, but I just want to push it as, as far as I can go. Like, I don't want to, like, tempt fate or anything here, but the documentary might be getting a cinema version for, like, a film festival or whatnot cool early days yet but um you know i just i having gone through like this whole process of where my head was all over the place for a bit and stuff like that you actually find out what you really do appreciate i i do enjoy doing this it doesn't have to be every week and all that type of stuff but i do enjoy it when it's here i enjoy the process of recording it i enjoy the process of editing and enjoy the process of sharing it yeah um you know, I'm, I'm going to keep it going. I might even be going to something like university next year in Inverness, but if that is the case, I'll still figure a way, even if it's like a Zoom or whatever, I'm, because I enjoy doing it. It's good for my mental health. Yeah. Even just have chats like this, man. You know what I mean? Um, but before before I go, we, I have been working on, um, for pretty much the full year, I have had a project um, where I've been adding the best clips and the best moments uh, of the year from the podcast into a project. I have swooshed them all together and it will be a Facebook exclusive episode that will go live on Christmas Eve at 12 o'clock. It's uploaded. Ah, cool. um, there's some absolute belting clips in there. Um, of Paul. <laughs> and yourself. There's there's some good ones of you in oh, there God. as well, if you remember. Um, oh, God. I'll just I'll hint at... Uh, lie detectors and condoms being the same thing <laughs> and uh getting old i hadn't even noticed that one when we did uh the year anniversary um and we're talking about phones getting uh bigger 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 smaller 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 and you yeah. I, you just hear you in the background and go it's like getting older and paul's like yes and then it takes her a while for him was like no rude <laughs> <laughs> so that that's in there um bunch of guests uh we had a live performance uh from uh tom morris and stuff like that. i'm giving i'm yeah, giving yeah. it all away but it's a half an hour long video I could have put more in there, but Facebook's limitations of file oh, size yeah. have had to, to trim it down. But um, so enjoy that. We've got this episode. We have our final guest of the year where we're actually going to them out. This will be out Friday, so it'll right. be next week. Then me and Paul are uh, doing one probably audio only in Nephew Bridge Hotel because I feel like they would get a bit suspicious bringing all these boom arms yeah. in and stuff. <laughs> stuff like that. And then we'll get Sashcast in there as well and uh but yeah it's been good catching up with you again man yeah uh we'll get you see you we'll get you in sesh cast we'll uh i've managed to oh we're doing a podcast uh with me finn and sean who have worked on the documentary as like a a budgeted you know those netflix things that they do with uh like scorsese and i'll have all the actors around them which is yeah yeah. kind of our version of uh of that so plenty to look forward to with after having a a bit of a break but um i'm looking forward to that fucking video yeah yeah oh trust me oh mate like i've I'm insanely, uh, I'm insanely proud of that. But uh, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I can't wait for Christmas Day to. I I can actually watch it because I'm the account holder, so I can see the uh. scheduled video. But I'm I'm very excited for people to see that. It's uh, it's very funny. But there's also some really cool moments in there as well. So, um, but yeah, yes. uh, we'll see everyone who's watching, listening uh, next time, and uh, I'll see you for Sashcast, my friend. I'll keep in touch with you, and I'll let you know. Cool. I will work it out around you, and we'll 
we'll get everyone in and uh, whatnot. But uh, brilliant, sweet. Thank you.